this piece of sculpture? Well, to me it's a wonderful piece of art. I looked at it as a man from the old school as something which I could not understand. But presently, as I look at it again, I find it's most uh, wonderful because it depicts to me a person standing and crying to heaven for something, for some help or the other. Especially as it has a space in the belly of the art. I think it's, a, it's, a, it's going to help build a nation, a very artistic nation for the next generation. I think a lot of these um, art pieces should be placed in prominent spots in the country of this nation. Es muy bonito. Eh, tiene una buen, bonita vista. Es muy atractivo todo. Me gusta mucho. Sí. Okay. Wow. first with landscape, a certain type of landscape, rugged lands, you know, the kind of quarry scenes that are the ones that most impressed me. In all your work there seems to be a sort of underlying theme of open landscape and barren land and this type of thing. Uh, is, this any, is there any lead to this in your early background? Yes, definitely. My first impressions of uh, what I wanted to do and say in my work was based mainly on quarry scenes. See, I lived at the back of the lab until quarry. And every morning as I got up, this thing hit me, you know. You see the red earth, the large exposure of, you know, rocks, you see. And this did a lot to what I have to say now, presently in my work. I feel that uh, barren, open landscapes give me a feeling of depth, you know, infinity, spaciousness. So I've worked with that, and after having traveled to Mexico, this broadened my ideas now when I came directly in contact with barrancas and, you know, um, open spaces and so. So I've been able to use this Right now, I'm not actually involved with a direct theme, you see, I've imposed other ideas on top of it, you see. And this has made me now an artist with something to say in space and time. I see. Area Laventil is so alive mm -hmm. with people, surroundings. Uh, have you tried to embody the people of Laventil in any of your work? Really not. Um, to me, my main concern is with uh, the earth. See, of course, we are a relevant part of the earth because we we part of the earth, we part of the universe. But to me, anyone having to say something about place, first contact one makes with is really with earth, nature, what one see on first impression. See, I, when I travel to Mexico, I can speak the language well, really. But after seeing the lands, immediately I felt a contact with the earth, the people, more, more, than, more than any sort of a language that could have explained, you see. I think if we travel to any part of the world, we may not be able to speak the languages, but if we, if we our first contact with the earth, I think this is what makes the first impression. And this is why I, I am so much involved with, you know, landscapes, space and you know, which really in, in, involves with, um, you know, depth, infinity and things like that. I use, um, it's a sort of atmospheric painting I use. You see, I use atmosphere in my work, which again substitutes this feeling for depth and space. Gandhi is one of your few representational works. Do you view it as this? 
Yes, I definitely do. The reason because I have done it this way is it's a commission, mainly commission, and I tried to fuse in this particular character of the man. It's not done definitely in the classical style, that's something else. So you, the form that you've seen there is a form done in a way to project a certain feeling of the artist, fused with the character as one see it, the artist in his making. I think this in itself brings about something that is unique, apart from the man himself. You know. How do you go about making a reality of one of your ideas? Well, uh, first of all, the concept is born in the mind. And from this form, you take it into the drawing scale. Several drawings of my work, ideas that I have conceived of, are put down into a drawing, black and white. And um, I will take it from there and um, carry it into the wire form. Usually when I use wire, I use wire as one will use paper and pencil. You see, you will use wire and draw with wire as one would take pencil and draw with pencil on paper. After this is done, while well, I have an, a pretty well conceived idea of what the shape is, I proceed from there on to add struts and cross struts to make the thing work. I begin to cover the wire with mesh and um, this will give you the basic shape of the entire form. Now, usually I use steel. This is dependent on the size of the form. In the case of a large form as the one that you are seeing here now, I have used steel, used steel struts, used steel support, and also used steel foundation. It's a very tricky balanced form there, as you see it, it's sort of resting at a point, but about five feet below, there's solid steel structure that could withstand the force of, you know, hurricane type winds. Now, um, apart from this, we go on to figure where probably one will have to use precast methods. Having had the various methods exposed to me, that one particular form, I fused them because it could not be done in, uh, in a whole, because there aren't facilities here to obtain this type of effect. So I fused several ideas or concepts to make this thing a reality as it is. medium would you say that you function, you can express yourself better in painting or sculpture? Well, for me one complements the other. Whenever I paint, I also have a, a sort of a dimension of sculpting in it. I think um, sculpting is really an extension of my painting. You see, because exactly what I say in paintings, I try to bring it off in three-dimensional form. So it's just an extension from one flat surface to the three-dimensional form. Do you say that your work has been influenced by any of the great artists of our time? Of course, I uh, have been influenced. Painters that most influenced me in is um, Turner and um, the Chinese landscape painters. I try to fuse these two elements with the concept that I believe in. You know. Why Chinese landscape painters? Well, See, there's something that exists in, in a oriental work, that spaciousness, see, openness of planes. You look at a Chinese painting and you see that there's, there's, a, there's a, this atmospheric sort of a subtlety, romance. And this is what I'm, is, is in my feeling, you see. So I felt that this had something to say, exactly what I felt about a particular environment, and I incorporated this into my views in what I have to think. You are of mixed Chinese origin. Do you think that this has anything to do with this style? Me, I'm not aware of it. You see, this is something probably one picks up as one go about. You see, you're born into an environment. You must be influenced by the environment regardless. So I, I don't think this might be the main subject, you know, of, of you know, influence then, saying, coming from my hereditary how do you view the recent criticism of your new, your latest sculptor at Richmond Street? 
there, there have been good and bad criticism of this work. What do you think of this? Well, uh, this is new exposure here. I must say so. This is the first time any type sculpture of this sort is placed in a, you know, in an urban area where people moving around their walks of life could see it and come into contact with it. So you must get a sort of, a, you know, view of a mix, you know, opinions, especially when this thing is new. I feel that some of it is valid, and again, to those who don't know anything about it will jump to, you know, all sorts of funny statements. But I think the important thing is that it's there and um, people get to know. It's like anything new you have to introduce. You introduce fun. People didn't know it at first, but when, once they get to the swing of it, you know, they, they, they catch up with it. So like anything else, art set the trend too. We are here. New concepts evolve. We are moving ahead as a people into international planes. So we must use, you know, the vocabulary that fits into the time. What do you try to say in this work? Well, the work of itself is a symbolical form. I try to symbolize in this particular form hope. I call it the spirit of hope, as a matter of fact. I, I use that term, the spirit of hope. I suppose this is sort of in the spiral form that the work takes. Yes, it's, 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 yes, that's right. As you can see from way back in the old Gothic cathedrals, men tried to give their full worship and, you know, feeling of um, spiritual elevation through the Gothic tower. Even today, contemporary man uses it as a form of hope to, to explore space, the spaceship on the launching pad. It's a towering form that soars into the heavens. It is a form of hope, man hope to conquer, man hope to discover, man's hope to search into new planes. So this form of, um, what do you say, towering shape that you see me do there is really a form of hope that I try to bring to the people. I hope that when people look at it, they will see this sort of a symbolized form. There is an enclosed space within the form. Yes. Is there any particular reason for this? Yes, there's a definite reason for this. In a space like this one, we really try to relate to internal space. As I always believe uh, that space is an essential thing in sculpting. It's a sort of sculpting that exists with this sort of internal space. As you know, the whole is not just a whole, but there is a shape to the whole. And inside of this shape, there's rich, you notice, that it moves off from one dimension and on to the other side of the form so that you, when you look at it, you see the reflected light of the morning flowing in from one angle. And that light hits off at one end of the first hole and bounces back on the other side. It's like playing with photography and lighting. Is this your first attempt of trying to make a comment on the social conditions of our country? No, it isn't. I think uh, every work of art, to a greater or lesser degree, is based on social comment. You know, you know one don't really set out to, but it's bent, it's bent on you know certain emotional feeling that you have sort of uh, been receiving through your environment. And whenever one paints or one sculpts or one play music, it's this feeling of you know expression of a certain time. A symbol of hope for aspiring people, as a people who have been faced today with a lot of, you know, emotional crises, conflicts, you know, protestations and things like that. We sort of have to be aware of what is happening, and um, we are looking forward for some new dawn. So in this, I try to put it there, and um, so that people could read through this and see some form of hope. Hope for people moving into a world of new concepts and ideas.